Oh, oh I'm so tired. Uh, I'm just here to talk about what you may have seen on TV, which was me and um, Annie Boxer and Ed Poodle. Uh, we appeared on ITV's This Morning on Monday. Um, it was quite a short notice thing to do. I think I'll fluff on my nose. Um, yeah, it was quite a short notice thing for us to do. We only knew about it on Friday, but I'm just making this video to talk about what it was like and you know, just kind of get some frequently asked questions out of the way regarding, you know, how it went down and why we did what we did sort of thing. Okay, so first point, um, I'm going to get onto what my experience was like on the show. Overall, it was really good fun. Uh, I woke up at about half five in the morning, you know, I had to get a taxi from uh, my place over to Annie's place and then get a car over into the studio. So before we actually went on the show, uh, we went into this secondary room next to the main studio where we essentially just did some poses and lounged about whilst uh, they, they filmed it. So when there was people watching at home, you know, they'd be like, up next, and then, you know, yeah, we would be on the TV on this thing. When we actually did the interview, it was great fun. The time flew by really quick though, so I felt I didn't really get as much of a word in as I wanted to in regards to like, you know, talking about what the actual fandom's experience was to me. But it's okay, because, you know, the other two handled it very well. Um, a few weird questions came up, and obviously I found out after the show, they put up some, you know, kind of, I'd say, quite offensive, cringy uh, lower thirds, you know. But we'll, we'll get onto that later, what my thoughts are on the matter. So, on to my thoughts on how it went about. So, straight away from the get-go, you know, they were very friendly to us and everything. Um, things started to take a turn for the worst when uh, we were doing the filming for the whole, like, green screen bit. And, uh, how what happened there was i think it was about three minutes before we were going to be introduced on the live tv bit like uh struggling with my fingers here jesus christ um so the yep so they said it was three minutes until we went live on the little preview bit of our interview one of the people walks in like holding this piece of paper and is like okay so here's the line uh they swear it's not a fetish, meet the furry fandom, and straight away, you know, alarm bells are ringing between me and the other two. No, we don't want that line said at all. If that line said, then we're going to go, we're not going to do the interview. They went away, they uh, quickly changed that, thankfully, and they uh, didn't introduce us with the whole, they swear it's not a fetish line, because that would have been quite disastrous. No, I think we did our best to get past the uh, sensationalism that they were pushing for in that segment. We managed to stop them introducing us with that, you know, fetish tagline. One thing I wasn't too happy about was uh, the furry's reaction to it on Twitter. I mean, because I posted uh, this tweet here before the interview actually aired. Um, just as like a kind of, oh hey, if you know what this thing is, which is quite obvious what it is, you know, watch it for a surprise. And you know, instantly people were just jumping on me and attacking me for all, you know what I mean, just for being on the show. They had no idea what I was going to say, no idea who else was on it with me. You know, they, they were just scared because it was someone other than Uncle Kage talking to the media, it would seem. Uh, as soon as the interview actually aired and was done and people had seen what we had, you know, managed to do, that day, the hate stopped, you know what I mean, it's had an overwhelmingly positive response and you know, thank you to all of you who've, you know, supported doing the thing. Um, now, here's on to a few points I just wanted to cover over the, is like the main reason of this video, uh, just so I can address the things, you know, I see on Twitter, whether or not I'm tagged on it, you know, I, was, I still had a look and saw a lot of things come up. So, uh, the first point. Uh, I'd like to address the lower thirds that happened during the interview. Uh, we had no idea those were put up there. 
Uh, we had no idea they were going to be put there, and we had no idea what they said until obviously we'd left the studio and watched the, you know, highlight online. Yeah, you know, I, I wasn't too happy about that myself. Probably the same can be said for the other two, but at the end of it, you can't really change much now. What's done is done. Uh, all that matters now is, you know, the actual what was said in the interview went, went well. I just hiccuped. <laughs> I think the lower thirds could have been worse, you know, in my opinion. They could have said something like, uh... Okay, on to my second point. Um, the other thing I wanted to address was the tweets they sent out. So, the first tweet they sent out regarding us was, you know, had the whole fetish tagline in it again. They obviously wanted to slip it in somewhere and just, you know, put it in there. At the end of the day, media is going to do what media does. It's going to try, you know, get views, essentially. But no, we, we didn't say that. None of us at all said, like, tried to say, oh, it's not a fetish. Like, those words did not come out of our mouths. They put them there, essentially. So don't think we made a mistake by saying something along those lines, because, you know, hands up, I didn't say it. On to my third point. You know, some people still think of the interview as being negative, you know. Oh, you know, you're going on TV, blah, blah, blah. You're doing it for your own ego and popularity and attention. Obviously, Annie was doing it and he needed some other people to support him. Obviously, they had fursuits because I don't think many people would want to, you know, reveal their identity alongside the whole weird fairy thing to like two million people in the morning and whoever else watches it on YouTube. You know, I'm doing it to support a friend sort of thing, you know, I kind of, I meet the quota for doing it and I feel that I could, you know, do well at it. You know, the uh, kind of attention and backlash or anything like that didn't occur to me. <coughs> oh, oh, God, my throat's dying. Um, no, the attention or the backlash or popularity, anything of that didn't occur to me until you know, after it was all said and done and Twitter was going crazy and that that was the only time I only really thought, oh, well, that kind of got noticed. At the end of it, you know, if we didn't do it and someone else did it who made a real hash of it, I'm pretty sure if you knew we were going to do it and we turned it down, you would have wished we would have done it. So, you know, we just thought we'll do it so nobody else does it because we don't want to chance it. It's a nice opportunity as well to go on a show I'm familiar with. You know, kind of life goals to be on TV. I've done that, you know, take that one off. But yeah, the, the final thing you should really take from this is that being on TV is pretty fun. I won't lie to you. Um, but as I've seen other people say, I'll say myself. Just because this one interview went really well, don't think the media are your friends from now on onwards, you know. Before we went on this show, we uh, we kind of vetted it and looked strongly into it and considered it, you know, we were very on the borderline of doing it. Even on the day, we said, you know, we're going to walk out if something starts going wrong. Um, that's what you need to be doing. If, if you're going to talk to media, If you're going to talk to media, just make sure that whoever you're talking to is, you know, at least not biased, they're not going to make it sensationalised. I really regret leaving that window open. No, just, you know, make sure it's not a, a scummy company, basically, you know, it's not a scummy news outlet like uh, the Daily Mail or something like that, you know. Be honest, but not too honest, you know. I mean, I understand that the fandom may have some sexual undertones to it, but that's not what represents everybody. And especially when you're talking to someone who's from the media in front of two million people, you don't really want to go out there and say, yeah, we all jerk off to like animal penises and stuff like that, you know, because immediately that would be taken out of context and make things much worse. All we were trying to do is kind of push the idea of the community rather than the reason we exist or to, we weren't there to deny that anything fetishy happens. We got asked the question like uh, once maybe at the start of the question, uh, questions I mean. You know, he, he turned to us and goes, oh, so it's not a fetish, is it? And we're just like, no. It's because we just wanted to get past the sexual questions, which is what we did. 
and we had a good interview out of it. You know, we weren't saying that there's no sex or anything. We were just saying that's not our primary kind of motive. But anyway, enough of my rambling. Um, I will link the interview down below if you haven't seen it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for supporting the actual, you know, interview on Twitter and everything. Or if you've messaged me with some support, yeah, I kind, I kind of need it because to be fair, I was almost regretting it about 20 minutes after leaving the studio. I wasn't really sure how it would be received, but no, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm so glad it's gone as well as it has. You know, I can't thank you guys enough for your support. Expect a new video soon, basically. So uh, yeah, once again, thanks for all your support, thanks for watching, um, you know, you do all the liking, subscribing shit, I don't care. Until next time! We're nearly knocked the fucking thing over.